For this presentation, we're decommissioning a 30 cabinet Lucent 5 ESS machine. This is the second video that I have produced of a 5E machine. This will end up at the Connections Museum in Denver eventually. And we have Sarah removing a door and giving us a thumbs up. In the rear of the first lineup with the door is removed, there are three aisles of equipment here. Wow, Michi. Here is the front side of one of the lineups of the 5E. I will later on show all of the circuit cards and some of the individual bays of what they did. And then behind Michi, we have the second lineup, which is the uh, communications module. And I will discuss that later on. Front of lineup. This is actually the 101 lineup. The beginning of the video was the 103 lineup, and then the middle aisle was the 102 lineup. Overhead view of part of the 5E. And then some of the cable rack here in the building. This is the administrative module for the 5E. This is where the hard drives are located. The control functions, the serial ports for all of the data terminals, which are operate at a VT100 type emulation for RC Mac complex translations and so forth. Down here in the very bottom is the biggest pain in the ass on the planet. This is a DAT drive. And of course, this system's very old. The DAT drives normally are quite old and they have a high failure rate. I can tell you from experience of changing out a bunch of these so we could back up the office to uh, a tape in case it was a failure. So you got four hard drives, two on site zero, two on site one. This is one of the two fuse boards for the 5E. So every cabinet has a whole bunch of fuse leads going to it. This is a miscellaneous cabinet. And this unit's what's called an office alarm unit. And this is where the noise maker that you would hear in the background of a central office when something was off normal would be. And then we got a pair gain test controller. And then down at the bottom, some modems and an inverter. This particular cabinet has got the analog lines. Each one of these plugs here is 32 subscribers and four of these makes up 128 pairs of wire that then goes to the mainframe and that's where the subscriber lines would come from. These are called an AIU, Application Interface Unit. This bay has what's called packet switch units. This is <coughs> part of the um, packetization or digitization of the voice because this is a digital switch, everything internally is digitized. And the trunks and so forth, which I'll show momentarily. These are two 16A units. Each one is connected to a T1. So there'll be 24 different announcements in each of the two boxes. And then this is another Cognitronics voice announcer. Rear of part of what's called the communications module. This is what ties all of the switching modules together. So if you make a phone call in switch mod one to somebody in switch mod three, it will go through this. This is kind of like a juncture grouping frame in an ESS analog office or a crossbar machine. Here is the front of one of the CM cabinets. This is side zero. And there's what's called side one. That's a mirror image of this. Here is the six cabinets of the communications module. So three cabinets make up side zero, three cabinets make up side one. 
if this office was built out 100%, we would have four more additional cabinets. This cabinet has the 3-1 MUX cards. These particular cards are a STS format, so it's actually a Sonnet DS3, so you cannot put a standard DS3 in the other end of this and actually make it work. This was connected to a Titan 5500 DAX that had STS-1E cards that would give you the ability to have the DS3 plus the overhead. Each one of these cards, minus the control cards, is 672 trunks. This is a switch mod controller. We have five switch mods in this system. This particular one is connected to a DNUS shelf, which is the trunking. So down the bottom shelf, which is technically the second one up from the bottom, because the bottom is blank, that is the switch mod processor. We have side zero and side one, and there's cabling to the administration module to talk to this. And then we have a time slot interchanger. This is where the voice would actually be switched through. And each one of those cards is a TSI card. And then there are a couple common cards on the shelf. And then there's some additional cards for the TSI. I'm not really sure what their functions are, but that all makes up the control for the SM. So this was a heavy traffic designed switch. These are the package switch units that is in this SM. So this is what um, the voice becomes packetized and these deal with those packets. Back of the switch mod and all of these fibers are interconnecting to either the DNUS, which is right <laughs> over here on this side. And I have removed those fibers. And then the gray fibers here on this shelf and this shelf, they connect to the communications module. And that's how you get calls between the SMs in a typical 5E office. One of the things that's very nice about the 5E is it's 100% connectorized. The only thing we've had to cut is miles of wax strength. And the crossover cable troughs, so we have one that's fiber, switchboard, fiber, power, This is the mainframe that was used with this 5E. There's not very many analog lines. Everything was switched through a DNUS to a Titan 5500 DAX, and then the DAX had other 3-1 MUXs and so forth that they would make cross connects in which would be done at a T1 level. The DS0s um, was not individually broke out in the DAX. They would cross-connect one group of 24 voice channels, and they would turn it into a T1 PRI or whatever else they needed at the time. The rear of the communication module, right now, Matt is working on disassembling this, Generally, you would never see the back of a communications module with all of the doors off of it. So this is the heart of the switch that ties all of the SMs together. These are the transceivers where the fibers connect that connect to the SMs. So this is the main control cabinet of the CM. They're side zero and side one, and they are a mirror image of one another. One of the power distribution modules for the 5E, they call it a GPDF. And we've taken all of the leads off of the fuses and these have got to all be mined out to the other end which has connectors on it so it's uh, plug-ended 
some of the power cable and also some of the fiber cable. Cabinets that have been set off of where they were originally at. These are ready to be shipped. Rear of a switch mod controller. This one had the T1s in it, uh, in the LTP base, as well as a bunch of test equipment and the general stuff you would find in a central office. Top view of the five ESS cabinets with the cable trough removed. These are ready to be put in a truck and hauled off. Here's two more aisles of the 5E that has been about 80% decabled. The tops of the 5E, there's two pallets already set up and there's another pallet being formed. This was the mainframe for the 5E. We have the cabling all removed from the intra bay and they're working on the AM. We're nearing completion of the disassembly. He's been like this all week. This is the power plant that actually ran everything in the building, the 5E machine and lots of other apparatus. And the battery bank for this operation. Rear battery bank, tag on the battery. Thanks for watching.